Yay! <laughs> Welcome to YCC Young Christian Cool. I'm super geek that you tuned in today. Do we look alike? Y'all see any resemblance? Today's episode is special because it's my mama deal. <laughs> it's my mom, Pam Fordham. Hi. And we are going to be talking today about being a young mother. So we're going to get right into it. Tell me a little bit about your mothering experience. Start with how old you were, where you were when you found out that you were pregnant, and give us kind of that backdrop. Also, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a goofy episode, but also, can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing? Okay. Well, I was born and I was raised in Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. and grew up in the Western New York area. Um, had a, probably a typical growing up experience in many ways. I um, did go to Sweet Home School, so maybe that was atypical for the 70s and the, you know, the time period during which I grew up. But, How so? Tell us, um, just in case people who are not from Western New York. Uh, Integration had officially happened okay. in the United States, but not necessarily in people's hearts. Okay. So <laughs> we lived in a neighborhood, you know, where we were maybe one of three or four families in a predominantly white neighborhood. And, um, you know, the school system was the same. I think for most of my schooling, I was probably the only black student in my class. And yet... Um, my parents were very diligent about, you know, giving us uh, good experiences and helping to shape our identity and our um, purpose in the world. And we went to a black church, and that's where a lot of my friends were from the church. And yeah, so okay. And then tell us about how you, how old were you, where were you when you found out that you were having a, a me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let's see, where was I? I, I was at school. I was a student at SUNY Albany and, um, probably, you know, to be honest, probably put my parents through the ringer a little bit. <laughs> okay. Um, I had planned on going to, um, a school in Ohio and had been accepted there and, you know, had, was following the path of many students. Um, and then literally probably a month before I was supposed to go to college, I announced with all of my 18 year old, 17 year old wisdom that I would not be going to that college and I would in fact be going to a different college. Um, as if, you know, my opinion was the only one that mattered, uh -huh. but I followed the person that I was dating at the time. I followed him to college and, you know, pretty much knew before I even made that decision that that was probably a mistake. <laughs> Did you know that before you made it? I, I'm pretty sure. However, the soundtrack of my life at the time, and I've said this before, was uh, Janet Jackson. Mm -hmm. And um, the song that, that resonated most with me was I'm in control. And I love it. <laughs> That's how the song went. When I was 17, I did what people told me. You know, and the song progresses, and she ends up saying, but I'm in control. Now I'm all grown up, and I love it. And, you know. <laughs> Lord, help us. Okay. God protects babies and fools. Yeah. And I was both... <laughs> So okay. I went off to college and, um, again, you know, almost immediately knew that I had made a mistake. I um, could not wait to get on campus. I don't remember having any kind of touching moments with my parents as they wow. departed beyond just, okay, yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm good. And um, I tried to contact the person that I was dating and, you know, so that we could connect yeah, yeah, get up together, this yeah. good college life uh -huh. together. And he had met some people and was off having a good time. And so that first night at, at SUNY Albany, I sat in my room alone wondering, what have I done? Wow. 
so it was it was a uh, it was the best of times and it was, it was the, the worst, worst of times. times you know it was a year that shaped my identity and you know I met teachers that influenced me and um, I spent more time alone probably you know than I ever had growing up as this kind of you know pampered baby mm -hmm. of the family mm -hmm. um, and had a lot of time to think I, I really only recall going to church maybe um, two or three times. Wow. But it was it was in me. During you your know, freshman year. During my freshman year. Okay, so let me actually stop you and ask a couple of questions. So y'all are probably noticing I'm like taking this in too because like she does not talk about this very often. I have been very blessed in that like I was not raised with my dad. I've never met him. Like I, I didn't even know his name until I was maybe like... <laughs> 17 or something like that but I think in the best way mm -hmm. in a way where it was like you didn't you never said a negative word so that's kind of going to bring me to my next question so that that year that you were don't let worry about those things I'm taking I'm, I'm imagining thing. people that have known me for like 20 30 years like <laughs> I don't worry about she it. Never told these <laughs> that's what I'm saying you know she doesn't talk about it so that that year when you were at um, SUNY Albany, and you say you didn't go to church, what were you doing? What did the year look like, um, just generally? Yeah. Did you have a lot of friends? Well, I was will, it fun? I will say, like the i the idea of not going to church was was already a place of discomfort mm -hmm. because I grew up in a household where. You know, if you didn't go to church on Sunday, you didn't do anything. Yeah, you, told you, me do, that you don't before. go to the movies. We don't turn on the TV. And it wasn't like in a punitive way. Yeah, it was just in a way priorities. Like, yeah, like seek ye first kind the of way. Of God and His righteousness if, and all if, these things. Should if be you're added. too sick to do that or whatever your issue is, then you don't need to be doing anything else until you get that that situation together. So you know, just the idea of um, not going to church was was part of you know, the discomfort of being out of place mm -hmm. and not, not being, you know, just knowing you're not doing what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So, but instead, you know, I, I, I really, I, can, I don't think I went to, I maybe went to one party wow. and, um, you know, just never, uh, settled into that like college like yeah yeah yeah. College. College. <laughs> yeah 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 because the the image of what it was going to be was destroyed that first night wow so you know i i read a lot and you went to class i went to class i was you know i'm a pretty good student okay. you know so so tell me a little bit there, there have been that's a recurring reoccurring mm -hmm. or sure. recurring okay <laughs> <laughs> That's a recurring theme in videos where we talk about people getting in any way sidetracked, in mm -hmm. any way off the track. That there is this kind of precursor feeling of mm -hmm. like, I should not be doing this. Mm -hmm. Or in a, a video that I've actually referenced several times, the guy ended up being a convicted felon. Mm -hmm. He said that he knew, like I should, he was born and raised in the church much like you. Mm -hmm. I should call my parents. I should call, you know, whoever in his community would have redirected him. Mm -hmm. What is it ultimately for you that allowed you to to ignore that unction? What do you think mm -hmm. that is? Because I just I'm interested in everybody's different mm -hmm. take on why don't we when we know it's not right? Why do mm -hmm. we continue to do? Um, I think it's just you know life and human nature in the world. But I'm gonna flip that statement okay. a little bit if you don't mind. No, no, please. Um, I remember growing up, there was a pastor at our church. He was one of the associate pastors, and his name was Reverend Wynn. Okay. I don't know if he's still living or you know okay. what the situations. But I do remember a specific sermon that he preached about, um, you know, being tugged at, and he said that we shouldn't feel badly or feel worried or feel ashamed when we're being tugged at. Mm -hmm. He said, we should be ashamed when we don't feel any tugging. Mm -hmm. you know, he said, that's when you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. When you do things and there's no conviction about it and you know it's all good and I'm not worried about anything. And he said, as long as, you know, and I, so for me, like that's the, the other side of that coin mm -hmm. of, you know, why do you go this way when you clearly know you should be going that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's the idea that, yes, I'm going this way, but there's this constant pull to go back in the other way. That's good. And I can't have peace until, until I, I listen to that, you know, so. Okay, so let's go forward. So you find out that you're pregnant. 
you tell your you tell grandma and grandpa can you walk us <laughs> can you walk us through that and can you also walk us through I'm about to get the juice, y'all. Can you also watch? <laughs> this is a story I needed to know. I'm just using this camera as a way to get it. <laughs> Can you also tell I us? I have signed a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> Can you also tell us what, even just in the littlest bit, was the fallout? How did you know that my father was not going to be involved? Or was the plan initially that he was going to be involved? Mm -hmm. um, the fallout was... Uh, you know, started falling out. <laughs> but again, I not to be repetitive, but yeah. the day that I stepped set foot on that on the campus, campus, okay, and it was just you know a continuous falling out. Um, it wasn't like yelling and screaming and emotional. Well, I maybe at times okay. it was. <laughs> okay. There were maybe a couple of Jerry Springer okay. moments. Okay. But for the most part, you know, the closer I got to having to return to Buffalo, mm -hmm. um. Again, you know, the more I found myself alone. So I, I remember in um, May when I would have come home, you know, I still hadn't told my parents. So I decided. How far along would you have been in May? Um, maybe like six or six, yeah. six, six months, months or so. Five or six, yeah. yeah. It's very far. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and I had, I had managed to avoid, you know, not really having to have that conversation with anyone mm -hmm. especially them and um so I stayed for the summer term and I remember you know them them saying wow she's such a good student <laughs> this little girl, grandma and grandpa yeah okay. this little girl boy she's doing something you know and just yeah like oh yeah <laughs> so I did you know I did go to classes and mm -hmm. you know progress yeah, as, as a student and what have you but um I remember that that summer um you know by then I had stopped talking to him almost completely mm -hmm. even though he was still on campus we were living two very different lives mm -hmm. um you know he was popular on campus and playing sports and you know with friends and shaping his identity mm -hmm. um and you know i was trying to gather the pieces of mine and, and figure out you know oh my goodness you know yep. what's what's going on and as, as fate would have it um that summer that i stayed there my dorm room uh mate was a girl who was from another country and she didn't speak a lick of english oh my gosh so you were really alone so but but you know I don't I don't think that that was an accident. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> you could have <laughs> you know I I couldn't have a conversation with her about anything. We were cordial. We yeah, yeah, out, not, yeah. out of each other's spaces. We might even sit down and watch TV together, but as far as having any kind of meaningful conversation, none. That's crazy. Yeah, she didn't speak it. She didn't That's speak a lick of English. Crazy. So you know, it's it's, it's funny. That is. That's it's really crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I had a lot of peace as you were growing. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't it wasn't a, a turbulent time. It was just a time of, you know, going to school and reading and, you know, doing what I had to do. So then, um, you know, of course, by July, I had to yeah. fess up <laughs> because I would be I would be giving birth in two months. Yeah, and I remember my parents came up to take me back to Buffalo and. Um, you know, I had to, I met with them and they were in great mood. <laughs> Did they, they had no idea. I was so tiny. I and, know you were. You know, and, and wearing a Albany sweatshirt <laughs> in the 90 degree <laughs> <laughs> summer of Albany, New York. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, whatever. Whatever, nobody, yeah. Nobody, these nobody are cares. things you don't question. Yeah, because she's not cold, a, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. not on the radar, yeah. you know, and she's a college student. Yeah, whatever. whatever. But um, I, I remember it was a hard conversation. You know, um, a lot of it, you know, was was just me trying to find the words to say the thing that I thought would destroy them. Mm -hmm. And it did for about 30 seconds. And then it was kind of like, all right, well, what classes are you going to take at both state? Wow. You know, there, we just, like, kept moving, kept wow. moving, kept moving. So that was, you know, again, that's what I needed, you know. Um, everybody, I, the village stepped in mm -hmm. and just 
took over. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say scripture real quick just because it made me think of it. It's forgetting that which is behind me, pressing towards that which is before me. We press to take hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of us. Yes. And it makes me think of that just because it's like, what can you do? What can right. you do? You know, and then a lot of yeah. times we focus on there's nothing that can, it's water under the bridge. Right. You know what right. I mean? Okay. So now let's move forward. I want to talk about a little bit some of the, the pick-me-uppers. For anybody who might be watching, there are so many young much younger than you. You were 19. Mm -hmm. There are so many like 14, 15 year old babies mm -hmm. having babies now. And I think a lot of times it becomes people's undoing. Mm -hmm. J just because of the world we live in and it, it, it's a lot of, it's, you know, mm -hmm. there's a myriad of things, mm -hmm. of course. But you, it that did not happen. You have two master's degrees now. You live in a house. You're a teacher. You're an author. Even though, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't, you know, it's coming, y'all. No, coming. she's got a book out, and she doesn't want you to even Google it, but it's called Woman, and that's that. <laughs> okay, so you're an author, you're a mentor, you know, so they're, you're like, please, let's move on from this. <laughs> but you really have been able to figure out how to move forward. Even graduating in three years, three and a half years, right? Uh, well, like, I took a summer off and then, yeah. So, so three, three and a half years, yeah. yeah. So how, yeah. how, how did you, how were you able to figure out how to move forward, how to pick up the pieces and to not, in some ways, not look back? Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's, it's funny, it's ironic that we're having this conversation because today at church, Pastor Hennings of Zion Dominion, thank you Bishop Hennings for the wonderful sermon that applies to what we talked about, to what we're talking about now, because the scripture from Proverbs was about um, seeking counsel and, and getting counsel and that being the key to fighting battles and to moving f to you know and the key to moving forward in fact um you know the scripture um was interesting to me because my english teacher brain i was reading it and you know phonetically it, it just or i guess structurally it just seemed like as i would kept reading it it didn't make sense mm -hmm. but there's a colon and it talks about seeking counsel and then there's a colon and it talks about the idea that you know you will be able to fight battles. Mm -hmm. And so I think before I even sought counsel, I got counsel. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my father became my college counselor. You know, you have a counselor when you're in college who says, this, these are the courses you need to take. This is the path that you need to be on. And he, like minutes after I told him I was pregnant, he stepped into that role. Wow. So I think um, that in that, you know, I was tremendously fortunate because I wasn't defined by what I had done or who I had failed or how much pain had been brought or how much pain I felt. I kept being redefined and reshaped and refocused on this is who you can be mm -hmm. if you are willing to step onto this path. So I think that was a big part of it, you know, just the idea of of getting counsel and then the other part of the sermon today was about having people around you who are put there for your purpose, purpose people mm -hmm. purpose people and I was Good. surrounded by purpose people but I do think like and that is potentially true for all of us mm -hmm. we're all potentially surrounded by purpose people but I just think that um, you know we're so dismissive of, dismissive of people and um, you know, very true. especially now with, you know, technology when we're, you know, maybe having quick conversations or conversations that are very superficial, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to dismiss people for a myriad of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but again, having spent so much time alone leading up to that period of my life where I really needed counsel, mm -hmm. I was like the literally the last, you know, Three months of my pregnancy for that for that seventh month or the sixth month, I lived with somebody who could not speak English. It's crazy. So I wasn't talking to anyone. Yeah, that's crazy to me. So I was so eager to receive. You know, I, I really again, you know, it's that tugging. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be who I should have been mm -hmm. and who I could be, mm -hmm. and I needed somebody to tell me how mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, should, you know, I just I don't know if it's no, no, that's okay. It's okay. 
you know, one of my favorite and, and most sad episodes of, of Oprah when I used to watch Oprah back in the day, she had a lady on who was anorexic and, you know, they kept trying to oh, help yeah, this lady. Yeah. They kept trying to help her and, you know, bringing in doctors and counselors and monitoring her and... Um, the lady, she would do okay for a while, but then she would slip back into, you know, the anorexic. anorexic behaviors. And I remember one one of the shows that she was on Oprah. Um, I don't know if it was Oprah or somebody else who said to her, you know, don't you want to live? You know, this is what you have to eat. You have to eat if you want to live. Don't you want to live? Don't you want to get over this sickness? And the lady was like, how? Mm -hmm. How? Mm -hmm. So I think, like, for me... And that lady passed. And she did. She ended up passing. Yep. I think for me, that how was bigger than anything else. Mm. Like, how? I want to I wanna be who I'm supposed to be. I've been in church all my life. I know what I've done. I don't need anybody to hit me over Reiterate the head. What's Reiterate. Reiterate. Yeah. You're a sinner, and you, you, know, you stepped out of the will of God, and God doesn't love you anymore. Actually, I was in a church where a pastor said that. Um, he said that, you know, all you young girls getting pregnant out of wedlock, God doesn't love you anymore. And, you know, I stopped going to that yeah, church. Of course. <laughs> but, but I think more than that, you know, I just needed how. How can I be what I'm supposed to be? And that so, penetrates my soul. Yeah. Ooh-wee, I think we all need how. And I think mm -hmm. that's what this space is about. So can you give us maybe even if it's just one or two because I think the story of pregnant teens today is maybe it's not not always I'm sure there mm -hmm. are there is a pregnant teen or a bunch of pregnant teens who have a very similar story to you mm -hmm. but then I also think that there are many pregnant teens who have a very different story than you mm -hmm. where they maybe don't have the community around mm -hmm. them that you had and they maybe don't have the spiritual upbringing in some cases mm -hmm. I'm, like I'm saying I don't want to paint a picture right, of all people right. and use a mm -hmm. paintbrush and just but could you give maybe one or two or however many you're inclined to practical hows of like uh, you've had this child and w what do you think I counsel I think is one good mm -hmm. good one find mm -hmm. some counsel find some counsel can you give maybe um, one or two others that mm -hmm. w w to practically help to get people back up once mm -hmm. they've I think um, again something that may be unique to my situation um, which I think is practical, even though I didn't intentionally seek it out, but yeah, I yeah. do think it made all the difference. You know, when, when, when I was a young mother, I didn't have any friends that were young mothers. Okay. You know, I had had one other friend who had a child, and uh, like a few months before me, and um, she gave the child up for adoption. You know, that was her, wow, the, her what choice. she had to choose to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying from the point of view of us, like, hanging out and commiserating and, you know, let's, let's go to Toys R Us and <laughs> with, our, with our strollers. Yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, no shame no, to anybody yeah, yeah, who's doing that. But I'm just saying from a practical point of view, when you want to uplift yourself, you you know, you can't. It's You have to be with people who... who are already there or people who are going to help you get there and or not be critical of your desire to be there mm -hmm. because you know I you you said just a minute ago like you know I never said anything negative about your father didn't. never really said a whole lot period didn't. and you know I didn't surround myself with that type of conversation. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, surrounding myself with people. He ain't nothing. Right, right, right. You know, my baby. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I remember um, you had a friend um, when you were young who was playing, you know, the two of you were playing together. You guys were about two years old. And I remember it was just like real sad to me. The little girl said, um, Tanisha, where is your dad? And you were like, I don't know. And then she was like, my dad don't love me. You know, wow. and I, her I mother just, had that makes me like, want to start crying. Like, God, you know, somebody had to have been saying that. Yeah, for her to, for that to be now become part of how she sees her. Because even now, I don't feel that way. Right. I don't. Right. I feel a lot of things, but I don't feel that way. Right. Necessarily. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just feel like, That's from a, a great very one. practical point of view, you know, if you want to be a teacher or a lawyer or you know you want to be a beautician or you want to be a nurse then you better surround yourself with some teachers some lawyers some beauticians and, and some, some nurses. nurses that's good and not people who just keep you in this pool of you know poor me that's i mean good. it's okay i felt that way yeah, you know yeah. i certainly had that but that i wasn't going to stay there mm -hmm. because that those feelings had nothing to do with the fact that I have a homework assignment due tomorrow, mm -hmm. that I have to read this book by mm -hmm. next Friday. Mm -hmm. So you could feel that way, but you know there's got to be this 
this group of people, like you gotta be running, run with the crowd. Right. You know, you gotta be with the crowd of people who are going in the direction that you wanna go. So I think that that's very practical. And I do think, you know, sometimes you have to seek that out. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I didn't necessarily, mm -hmm. um, but you know, sometimes making the choice to do this means not, I'm not gonna do that, that, you know. Okay. So, and then in, how about one more? That was great. Mm -hmm. Those were two. Seek counsel. Change the people that you're surrounding yourself mm -hmm. with. You have any uh, one? More? Um, I just think like the constant thing, um, you know, from the young Christian cool. Be yay! yay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you guys saw like you live. I want to get it up. Okay, good. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but, um, you know, we we were talking about this a little bit mm -hmm. in the car, and I. I think that um, we got to reshape the narrative on what it means to be a Christian, you know, and and what it means for young people to be Christian. Mm -hmm. Because probably everything, whatever coolness I have, whether it's, it's that much, no, or, it's, you know, it's, whatever it is, <laughs> it, it only comes from being Christian, you know. So I, I think that, um, again, not to be redundant but to surround yourself like the church just helped me in so many ways mm -hmm. and again you have to be I left the church that told me that but God hated me you gotta be you know? specific about what you so, have in your spirit you know so I went to a different church and the Bible does say seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and you gotta know for yourself mm -hmm. you know it says study. study to show thyself approved so it wasn't just like you know going to this church and them direct it it's like it's gotta be what I seek has to be in sequence with, you know, or in accord with, on accord with what I'm reading and studying for myself. Like that, there should be this parallel. Right. Um, and this building, you know. So I think that, um, you know, we, we can't be afraid to to be a, the church people. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And what you're doing is, the, that's the only reason I've decided to participate. Because <laughs> I do think it's important. I, I do yeah. think that you know, we need to reshape this narrative around what it means to be Christian. Very cool. Did you feel like you had to give up any bits of what you had hoped to do or what maybe your vision of yourself was prior to going to college? Um, if so, has that has it been restored? Um, yes. But it, it was a it was a double edged sword, okay. Or a two sided coin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was peanut butter and jelly, whatever you know, however you want to. I had to give up the image of Janet Jackson, and you know, I'm gonna be in control and I'm gonna love it. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> the way you said love it is still me. I, 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 I have the album. <laughs> okay, you know, I think I got like the Rhythm Nation, I got the hat, and the, I used to know the whole thing. I can't believe you haven't said the Pop It Don't Preach one. You used to yeah, you know, Pop, well, that one was, yeah, you know, okay, that, <laughs> but I, I had to give up that image of myself mm -hmm. and I never got that back I never fully came back to hey ho, oh, hey. hey you know I never came back, oh. never came back to like you know <laughs> find me in the club follow the love <laughs> besides my own living room that that never manifested yeah. itself I had to give that up Be, and 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 I think again oh, wow. for young mothers and it's not like you have to become a nun and wear yeah. like tent dresses, and, no. you know. But you are a mother. You're a mother now. And and for me, like I had, I was blessed with such a wonderful mother, who I even as a baby recognized how that she was so selfless, and that she would literally lay down in the road so that I could have. A peaceful journey you know so so like for me not to offer that to, to be that kind of mother to my own child is unfathomable mm -hmm. you know what I mean like I couldn't I and and my parents did not support that either oh you know? yeah, yeah like they would they were completely supportive and um, willing to watch you and but not so I could go to the club mm -mm. they were like you got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. If that's what you want to do, you're mm -hmm. going to have to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I'm grateful for that mm -hmm. because I was a mother. Mm -hmm. Young, albeit, but a mother. Like that, that, so when you give up this, there's got to be this putting on of something else, you know. And, and 
you know, that what I put on versus what I gave up, what I gave up would have most definitely left you motherless. Mm. You, I, you would be sitting here talking about, you know, my mother died. That's sad. Yeah. So what I gave up did not in any way, way compare to what I became. You know, and all the joy, and I, you know, as I know it's cliche, the joys of motherhood. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It, it was. It, I. That's you're the only child I have. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, like, yeah. Yes, I, I'm glad I did it. <laughs> yeah. You know. So what now? What, what do you now? think? Now moving forward, you're super young still. Well, when you think about yeah, the fact that a lot of people, well, no, even think about it. If I have, I'm so I'm about to be thirty. If I have, when I have children, <laughs> <laughs> another show, Freudian slip. <laughs> when we have children, even if I had them right now, even if I had them right now, I'd be like right on the heels of your age by the time I'm even got them it's, it's serious though if you yeah, really no, think no, about it true. by the time I get them like out of high school and stuff like that yeah. so you're young now you because of you know how things unfolded in your life you're super young so in a lot of ways you got a whole new lease you're you can retire and still be this the age that most people still have kids in the house mm-hmm. so what does that mean now what does that mean in your dream in your in dream, dream world if money wasn't an issue in your dream mm-hmm. world what would you do um. Hmm. Well, I'll say this because I, 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 I want to. You know, I don't want it to be like middle aged Christian and cool. Okay. I still want to no. keep it. You know, I still want no, the honest answer. You know, yeah. This, okay. this is gonna be an honest answer. Okay. I just um, am so thankful for all the things that I've been able to do. Um, you know, for for a lot of reasons, not anything that I like because of my whatever. Yeah, because but of your... just like living this tremendously blessed life. So I just, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to put a limit on what what God can do in my That's life. Good. You know, of course, like anyone, I have like oh, I'm too old to start over, and you know, but me too. I try not to, you know, I try to just be like, there is no limit to what God can do. Take the limits off. I don't know that song, no, but I think it might be the wrong. <laughs> I don't know that song. Okay, wait, how's it going? <laughs> um, what's his name? Uh, Israel Houghton. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm not. Okay. Like, go ahead and sing it a little bit. No, no, I ain't going to sing it. Because <laughs> that is a limit. God has limited these vocal cords, so we might go and expose the world to that. Okay. But, you know, I just, I just feel like we... Like, you know, anything is possible. I, there's a lot of things I like. I, of course, have hoop dreams of, you know, doing all kinds of things. I love to be a New York Times bestseller yes! someday. I speak things that be not as though they were. I would love that. That yes! would be great. I, you know, would love to maybe have a publishing company or a, yes! at least a bookstore. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I can went from a publishing company to a bookstore. I can sell coffee and use books. Well, you know? you are, that was a used bookstore. <laughs> this keeps going. <laughs> okay. You know, but I'm open okay. to just whatever is, whatever is possible. And that's like, I think, you know, the Bible talks about, um, you know, waking up every morning and renew, God renewing your mind. And I do think, like, every day begins, I literally sit on the edge of the bed and, you know, like, this is the day I'm going to write that bestseller. Mm, and, of course, by the beautiful. end of the day, <laughs> you know, you got the remote and I'm watching Your Netflix on my fifth episode of Orange is the New Black or, you know, whatever. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Try it again tomorrow. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm like everybody else where... You know, it's just like something you have to work and pray and, you know, and um, be diligent about every day. Okay. So. Hardest time that you remember, hardest, either it could be a moment or a season or whatever that you remember specifically as a mother mm-hmm. and what helped you in that moment mm-hmm. or season or whatever. Um, the hardest time, I think, was the time that I had waited for for three years. I had waited. I, I like wrote poems and had dreams about moving out of my parents' house. Oh, so yeah. right after I had you, I moved into my parents' house and to finish school, and mm-hmm. it was a blessing, yeah. obviously. But ooh, I could not wait to move and just start my own life. That Janet Jackson was still a little residue. It was, still residue. There. It was residual. <laughs> there you go. It was still there, you know. But um, 
I graduated and then um, got a job in Virginia. I'm, I'm going to confess, all of the history teachers will be appalled. I had no idea where Virginia was <laughs> on the map. I interviewed, I went to this teacher recruitment day and interviewed, and um, Virginia, Fairfax County was like, do you want a job to come work for us? I was like, yes. I had no, had no idea. idea. Virginia could have been on another planet. Like, wow. if you had put a map in front of me, <laughs> you I could not have picked yeah, yeah. out where Virginia, I just yeah. knew it was somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get to leave. I, cause, yeah, because I was ready to, you're ready, you know, yeah. I thought I was ready to yeah. be free and do things on my own terms. And um, But those three years, I was in Fairfax County, Virginia for three years. And, you know, they were great. Obviously, it was a, you know, first teaching experience and all that. But those were hard years. I mean, you know, this there's nothing glamorous. And I just say this without any, you know, I'm not condemning anyone, obviously, or you know, throwing shade or whatever, but there is nothing glamorous about being a single parent. You know, I mean, we get through it. Yeah. We do it. We and make some the most do of it. Of great grace. We have, we have great memories. And we have great, great memories. Great times. And, but if I could trade it all and do it all again with my husband, that's how it was meant to be done. Mm -hmm. Those were such difficult years. I got paid once a month. Ooh, I mean, we, we, ate, hurt. <laughs> we ate more hamburger, hamburger helper <laughs> and applesauce, I think, than any human should ever <laughs> take in. You know, I mean, it was it was just difficult. It was a difficult, difficult time. I didn't know anybody in Virginia, mm -hmm. um, so it was a, it was a difficult time. And you know, I talked to my parents every single day, mm -hmm. but I was it was the loneliest I've ever mm -hmm. been. And you know, it was it was just a hard time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how'd you get through? What was the thing? Um, I think again, you know, I had a church there. I remember that, that church. Yeah, first, I remember going in I that first. I remember yeah. that church. I think you went in the front door, right? Yeah. The the yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I was, I was younger than three. First Baptist of Vienna, Vienna, I think it was. But you know that that's what helped. I mean, um, you know, I I remember. Like the things we did, mm -hmm. like the Halloween parties or mm -hmm. maybe the all, all Saints parties, I guess. That's <laughs> no, be politically correct. It's, it's okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, whatever the Christmas whatever parties, the, whatever the, you were in the little children's I choir, you know. And although I wasn't like friends with those people, um, they were my family. That's right. While I was there. That's right. And um, that's what helped me through. That's great. Mm -hmm. What do you say to yourself when you feel like yourself kind of coming undone now, mm -hmm. now in this present moment? Anytime you're just feeling, a little, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling nervous, you're feeling um, like there's so much to do and I don't know how to get it done, or you're worried about the future, or you, you know any any kind of like a moment that you're having now, yeah, or you're angry about Trump, you know. <laughs> I'm saying that's what a lot of people are experiencing. Um, mean. yeah, I think you know you need to have a mantra that or a mantra mantra yeah. that becomes part of that's just in your spirit. And mine is there's absolutely nothing wrong, even if everything is wrong. I still so just tell, tell myself there's absolutely nothing wrong. And, you know, for me, having a song in my spirit or in my head and music does it for me. Music. You're like the third person to say that. It's true. Music pulls me out, you know, every time. But I also will say, too, that, you know, I've probably spent most of my life not being a crier. And I, I think when I turned 40, I found great freedom in crying. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm still working on the great freedom in publicly crying. Yeah. You know, I still don't like to, you know, cry publicly. Pub cry publicly, but... Um, there were periods when both, you know, when my parents were sick, your grandparents, um, I've told you this before, where I started each and every day with a good old 20 minute cry. Wow. And then once I was done, it was like, okay, on with the day. Wow. You know, now, so I, I think, you know, that helped too, but not, but again, not staying in that place. Yeah, you can stay there. Yeah. Releasing it just, and, and then letting it go. And then letting it go. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Tell us why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> okay. What is the happiest thing that you do now? The thing that makes you the most unbridled mm -hmm. happiness and joy. That gives you the most unbridled happiness and joy. What would you say that thing is right so now? So you're gonna be shocked at this answer, I think. <laughs> I love teaching. 
I, 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 know, it's, I know it. I do. I, I think about retirement each, <laughs> every day. I don't think a day passes where I don't talk about retiring. Okay. Um, but it's just something about, you know, like when I close my classroom door and just sink, sink into some good old, you know, the crucible or oh. Lord of the Flies. Oh, God. The Hamlet. The help or Hamlet or their eyes were watching God. You know, and just start. Even the way you're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> it okay. just, I, I just love it. I love everything about being a teacher. And I, you know, I realize like this is, this is a season to everything. There is a time and season and that season will come to an end as it should. Yeah. But for now, I love it. That's great. I'm gonna remind her of that now. Next time she calls me, talk about retirement. Okay. And the last question is: Give us your favorite scripture. If not your favorite one, then just a really good, a good solid one that comes to a mind. Good solid one. Ooh. I know there's a lot of pressure because yeah, everybody's always yeah, like, "That's a lot of pressure." I've watched some episodes too. I don't. Know okay. <laughs> but I think, um, like, at the at its very core, from Romans, nothing can separate me from the love of God. I mean, I just, that's, that's wonderful. No matter how low you are, or no matter how high you see yourself, nothing, nothing can separate, separate you from me, or you, or, or you. you. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. From that was prophetic, because we was both like, or you. That was good. From the love of oh God. God. So. Oh, thank you for she came at the last minute. Somebody else was supposed to come. Who is coming later in the week? <laughs> and I, <laughs> Allison, that's her name. <laughs> Thank you so much. So you know how I hem it up because you have watched an episode. Can you pray us out, please? And pray for the people who are watching as well as not just us. Yes. Dear God, I just thank you for this opportunity to do this. I thank you for the opportunity to show that being a Christian can be young and cool and yes. exciting and you know that we it's a lifestyle that we should embrace it's an ideology that we should embrace and it's a faith that we should let guide us in all that we do yes. i pray for people who are struggling emotionally and physically and economically yes, and God. relationally yes, i just God. pray that god just move in and allow them to to feel the depth of his love for them yes God. and i just thank you for another day amen amen <laughs> Pam Fordham. Look for it on the New York Times bestsellers list and look up that book, Woman, because it's still available at Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you. That was crazy. Thank you all so much for tuning in to YCC. Hopefully, something that we have said has inspired you and touched you guys. Hang in there. We got it. I know it doesn't always feel like it. Sometimes it feels like. The very end, boy. You can do it. You can do it. Chin up, shoulders back, eyes to Christ. We will make it. Love y'all. See you later. Yay!